Hello everyone, this is Mr. Maas and today I will be taking a look at the Sound Expander. The Sound Expander you say, yes I want to compare it with the FM Jam. So let's just take an FM Jam, right, and put this right next to the Sound Expander. You can see that the FM Jam is a little bit smaller, right? The Sound Expander is quite a bulky thing. And the FM Jam is a shiny red cartridge for your Commodore as well. Now this one has got the YM3526 chip in there which is the OPL1. This one has the YM3812 which is the OPL2. Now I was wondering you see that this is here a cartridge port and this is usually used for a Datel MIDI interface. And over here you have, I think somewhere over here, yeah, you have a uh, connector as well to, to connect the keyboard that was delivered for this particular one. But I was wondering, this is very interesting, right? Why don't we put the FM Jam in this Sound Expander expansion port? What would happen? It's used for a MIDI interface, but what would happen? You would get something that looks like this. This is an FM jam stuck into the sound expander. Now let's take a look what will happen if we're going to play a few tunes. Okay, so I plugged it in a C64 right here and uh, I haven't connected any audio cables just yet. So you can see here on the TV screen the, uh, the C64 is on so it fits obviously. You have the FM jam right there where I will you know connect some audio cables. If you know the sound expander you will know that there is a, a RCA uh, connector right there for the audio out. So let me just plug it in and see see what will happen. I will load up Vibrance FM the demo that I made originally for the sound expander but you know that has music that was actually used on the PC Adlib uh, sound cards where there's the YM3812 in and that's in this one but you know you never know what will happen right so let me just plug it in first okay so I plugged it in and you see here in the FM jam I plugged in the audio out for for listening and normally you would have audio in in this port and you know that would be the SID chip in usual cases and uh, you would mix the SID chip with the OPL2 sound and then you would get the mix um, and the sound expander like I said here has the RCA out uh, to for the OPL1 chip which is inside here now I loaded up Vibrance FM and let's just see what happens as I've run this so I haven't got any audio I don't, I'm not taking any audio from the sound expander I'm just taking audio from the FM jam Okay, let's run. Here we go. As you can hear there's some sound, right? If I go over to my computer here, you can see that I'm getting sound from it recording it. Let's turn it up a little. Now this is clearly the OPL2 sound, right? But now it would be interesting to see, you know, what does the other thing do? So we can see what happens if I plug this one in. So let's plug in audio in. And let me get the cable, which is this one. I'm just, I'm just going to take, because the RCA is, is mono anyway, so I'm just going to plug in. Let me move this M6 a little bit. Now let's see what happens if I plug this one in. Oops. a clear increase in volume 
which means that I get two for the price of one. I've now got the OPL2 from the FM jam, and I've got the YM3526, the OPL1, from the sound expander mixing in. So let's see, you know, because the sound is a little bit different, right? So the, the OPL1 just has the sine waveform. So let's try another one. Now you can see here that this channel is now mixing the, the uh, OPL1 with OPL2. This is just the OPL2, but the one channel, in this case the right channel, oh sorry, the left channel, is mixing it in. So this channel is now a full mix of OPL1 and OPL2. I know it's a little bit of an abomination, right? But it works. And it does give some very interesting sound because now you can play around with OPL1 and OPL2. Basically you have two carrier and two modulators, one, one of them being a little bit different. And you can play around with that in the song, right? You can play a little bit around with that. And there are some five in the song, I, I think. Um, let me check which one it is. This one, yeah. Introism. Okay, so if I if I normalize these mixes a little bit, then then you can you, you can actually hear the stereo sound because the sine wave only has so much it can do with you know with the uh, vibrato for instance. Um, a little bit different. So when the song selects you know different waveforms than the sine and puts some vibrato on that, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit off because it's on the left right or, or left or the right side of the, of the stereo channel you will hear a stereo effect and I will put up now after this I will put up this song or maybe even a couple more songs just to listen to that effect then you just you know, take your headphones and listen to that effect so interestingly though it's a little bit of an abomination this it does enable you to have two chips play the same music at the same time and because one is a little bit different than the other, the sound is a little bit off, which makes it sound stereo as well. And uh, it makes for interesting effects. So I think this is a nice example of how to use this. And um, maybe I can do some more with this, with some different songs. So um, anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, now I will play some songs that you can hear then, you know, just the, the difference between the OPL1 and OPL2 and how this sounds a little bit like, uh, like some nice stereo effect. Okay, see ya. Bye-bye. Thank you.